Well, welcome once again to Pennsylvania. Check out this view, the Big Valley Vista. That is a view. Now, earlier today, we were out uh, down that way somewhere at Reed's Gap State Park, beautiful little park. But at this point, we are headed into the, what's called the Poe Valley here in, uh, I think we're headed into Center County, Pennsylvania. Not quite, we're still up on top of the mountain, but in a little bit we're going to head in onto Poe Valley Road and we're going to visit a couple places in there. There's two little state parks. There's Poe Valley State Park and uh, Poe Patty State Park. We'll talk about those places when we get there. We'll do a little bit of hiking at the one place, I think. And I do have some mail. i got a pile of mail to share one of those locations. So I'm gonna, we're going to hop back in a Jeep and get going. Might film a little bit on the way there. It's often we are, we're on these back dirt roads of Pennsylvania in the mountains here. So anyway, let's get going. It's absolutely, absolutely beautiful day here. This is September 14th, Monday. Yeah, so we're still kind of up on, up on top of the mountain. I think when we get down to the bottom, we'll get on a Poe Valley Road. I do love driving on these old back roads here. Gravel and dirt roads. And making our way down the mountain now. Time to start keeping our eyes open for a, a sign for Poe Valley. We're not in the park yet, but here's a sign for uh, the CCC, Civilian Conservation Corps, site of the Poe Valley Camp, 1933 to 41. And I guess that was up here. There's a building up there. I'm not going to go up there, though. I'm not sure if that's a private residence up there or not. But I guess they do have signs down here. Like right here's where some of the barracks were. That sign could use some help. There's another sign up here quick. Yeah, but just more just more barracks. Yeah, alright. And there was something else down along the road I wanted to see as well. Yeah, just down the road here I passed something as well. I want to see what this is. Looks like it's just a memorial for somebody, but I want to check it out. Oh, here we go. In memory of Bernard Euler, assistant leader of the CCC, killed in line of duty, 1935. Hmm, it's a neat little memorial there. All right, let's get back into uh, Get back to Naomi there. She's waiting for us and we'll head on into the state park which should just be down the road a little bit. And here we are, there's the sign for it. Poe Valley State Park. So there should be a driveway in just a little bit here. Or maybe just a little bit further yet. <laughs> yeah, here we go. Welcome to Poe Valley State Park. All right, so here we are. Stopped at the little park office there, grabbed the map. And there's a nature trail just down the way here that we're going to do a little bit of hiking at since we're here. I think I said it already, but it's an absolutely beautiful day. So let me show you a map and uh, show you where we're going. Just stop here to have a little bit of snack as well. Getting close to lunch. Yeah, so here is the map. Got to have a hold down with rocks. 
and of course we came in on Po Valley Road and we're parked right here and there's a nature trail that goes out here comes back so that's what we're gonna do whoops not shadows in the way there that's what we're gonna do here in a moment and just down from the parking area looks like more people are showing up there is a nature trail I'm not sure how long it is, the map didn't quite say. I would guess it's at least a mile. I know coming back it does follow the, what's called the Poe Creek, so we will get to follow a creek for a little bit. I like following those kinds of trails. A little bit different from where we were hiking earlier today at Reed's Gap State Park. That was mostly hemlock trees along a creek. A lot of these are these are white oak trees. The bark is a little paler in color compared to say like that one there is a is a red oak. And then right there's a white oak. You can tell the difference between the two. <laughs> All right. A lot of white pine trees, that'd be these here. A lot of the mountain laurel growing on the sides here, so a little bit of a different landscape than from where we were earlier. It's nice to have a change as well. All right, and I'm seeing my first splashes of orange and red in the leaf color. I think in a Oh, several videos ago we were talking about how I like the yellow with the green in the leaves, but I mentioned I hadn't seen any red or orange. Here we go. There they are. Just little ones. There's some yellow over there. Alright, so it's happening. <laughs> it is mid-August, so they are bit by bit starting to come down change colors. One of my favorite times of year. I did spy us a little friend in there. Let's see if I can zoom in on him. Might be hard to find. I can see him off camera. Is that him right? Oh yeah, he's blurred out because of the branches, but he's back there. You can see the chipmunk back there. Camera's focusing on the twigs. Alright. There he is though. Well, I dropped the camera down a little bit lower, away from the branches, I think. There he is. He sees me. He's trying to be inconspicuous so I can't see him. But we see him. All right, we'll let the little buddy go. I'm kind of in an awkward position here. Bye, chipmunk. Next time we see a chipmunk, I'll have to play the uh, Can You Find the Chipmunk game. That's where I don't really tell you where the chipmunk is, but I just slowly zoom in on it. I think we did that last year several times, but that's kind of fun. I just heard one over here. They kind of make a noise. Of course, now having said that, maybe we won't find another one. We'll see, because they, uh, they're, they're camouflaged. They blend in really well with their surroundings. All right, here's hoping we do see another one. And we made it down to the creek now, so the trail has turned. So I believe this is the Poe Creek down here. Nice little stream. 
Might be able to hear some voices back there just past a couple of people. So we may not see any chipmunks for a little bit. Some people just recently passed through going the other way. Yeah, check out all the ferns down here though. tripping on tree roots. That's the problem with filming sometimes you're kind of looking at the camera screen and stuff not paying attention to where you're you're walking. So there's some really awesome scenery along this trail with the stream and the ferns. I know I said it already, but it's beautiful out here. take a moment to show you this tree over here. This is yellow birch and you can easily tell because of the bark this peely, what's well, a leaf, but it has this peely bark. These are definitely birch leaves but I'm teaching a survival class this year at the one, a survival class this year at the one place I'm teaching at. And we were talking about yellow birch bark. I didn't have any on hand because last week we did a, they had to do fire starting. So I might take a little bit of this with me to show them what it looks like and how it burns. So if you know what yellow birch looks like and what the bark looks like, you can use it as a fire starter. It's because of the oil that's in the bark. It just works like a little torch, just keeps burning. Yeah, it was fun last week trying to get them to start fires. I had a, I had a, they all were using flint, the flint and steel method to make little sparks to get fires going. I think there are five groups. There's like 22 kids in that class. So but anyway, eventually they all got a fire going. It took some of them quite a while, but they got it going. And it just shows that sometimes making a fire with flint and steel isn't always as quick and easy as it looks like on TV or in other videos. Sometimes when you watch a video, you know, you show them like, you know, making the sparks and, you know, two seconds later they have a roaring fire going. It doesn't always work that way. Sometimes it takes a little while to get things going, especially if the tinder is even slightly damp. So it's just kind of a journey into realism sometimes that, you know, some of those fire, marting, fire starting methods aren't as quick as they look. Which could be dangerous if you're already lost and you're already tired and worn out. Sometimes getting a fire going is more difficult. Anyway, back to the nature trail. Yeah, these are the kind of tree roots that I'm tripping over down here. Like this one right here, just sticking way up. Some of them I'm trying to film. Alright, coming from Mr. Beach, the beech tree. And it looks like we have come to the end of this trail. Up here's the road and the park office. Well, I enjoyed that trail quite a bit, actually. It was a nice little trail. So if you're in the area, hike that one. I don't know if there's, I don't think there's another trail that's dedicated just to this park. There are other trails over the mountains and stuff that are like more like long distance trails. But if you're looking for a nice one to hike, that's the one to do. All right, so we're going to get back on the road and go several miles down to what's called Poe po Paddy State Park. Not all sure what we'll do here, there yet. Maybe just a little bit of hiking. And then, uh, like I said, I have some mail to share with you.
quite a bit but some some cool stuff all right let's get going well before we head over to Poe Patty I just I did want to show you the lake here at Poe Valley State Park they have a nice little lake I'm not sure if you call it little but they have, they have a beach area over there playground and there is camping here as well so there is it's another little state park but there's a lot going on here beautiful little scene right there all right now let's head on to uh po patty hop back in naomi and it's back to a gravel road again Driving down these dirt roads, you get the feeling that you're just really like out in the middle of nowhere. And we actually are, in a way. Cool to see a bear run across the road here. And here's our sign. Po Paddy State Park. I said this is just a little park, but I think they do have camping here. I see something off the side of the road here. Yeah, so this looks like a really neat place to camp as well. There are some people camping out there. This is the parking for the uh, boat launch area, but you're pretty remote out here. Nice place to camp. Down here is a down here is a Penn's Creek, so we're gonna go ahead and go down there. Northern water snakes. All right, cool. Maybe there'll be one down here. Let's go ahead and check the creek out. Then we'll find a place to share mail with you. Yeah, wow. It's a nice sized creek. Oh, that is beautiful. Wow. Okay. down here a little more yeah that is a beautiful shot out that way yeah definitely definitely worth the trip to come here if you go camping here you got this creek you can cool off in or do some kayaking it's just beautiful out there And check out these pretty flowers. I can't say they know what they are offhand. I remember seeing them in the field guide, but I want to say some kind of spider wart, but I could be totally wrong. Pretty blue. Alright, let me get some pictures of those. Yeah, this is a really cool place to explore with all the rocks. Someone looks like they built a little uh, pool there. Maybe we'll, maybe there's some fossils here too. We'll see. Getting distracted. I wanna, I'm supposed to be finding a place to share mail, but wow, this is really awesome out here. Just beautiful view. So I decided to share my mail with you right by this creek. There's a nice little bench right there. So good little spot. All right, let me get you set up on the tripod. Got some, got some goodies down here to share with you. All right, so I do have a bunch of mail to share here with you. I got it kind of all set up on a bench here because the wind keeps blowing things off. But yeah, hopefully I got it all organized properly. Got the letters with the correct packages and everything, but these are in no particular order or significance. Just gonna 
start grabbing and, sh grabbing and sharing with you. The first one is this is from Bill and uh, I think it's Bill. Yeah, Bill and Cecilia. Got a cool little card here. And thanks for the, the financial gift that was in there as well. They have they sent me a package as well. I'm pretty sure you're the ones that sent this package because I had several letters sitting in this box. But I, picked, I think that goes with yours though. They sent me two things of peanut butter. One is just natural peanut and one is honey roast. This is from a, uh, what company is this? Oh yeah, it's called the Peanut Butter Company. There was another, I buy peanut butter from something called the Peanut Butter Company, but it's a different type of a, uh, I think it's a different company. That's cool. And these are natural, this is natural peanut butter. So it's not full of all the sugar and stuff. So cool. I have to finish up the current jar that I'm using before I get to these. So thank you for that. I'll be using that. And they also sent, there's a little bag of this in here. It's like little candy things, and if there's peanut butter on the inside. It's already opened. I, uh, I, I, I couldn't wait to try these. These bring back memories. I think I had these when I was little. Let me break one open for you. It's, it's not like a pretzel. It's not an actual pretzel. It's like a candy pretzel with peanut butter on the inside. I remember these from when I was little. So I didn't I didn't wait to open that one. So thank thank you for that. While I eat in front of you here. Alright, here's a card. This is from here, check out this card. Looks like a homemade card. Not all who wander are lost. Got my my uh, thing on there. I think this is from Linda. Yeah, Linda. She has that poem from Tolkien's book. All that is gold is not glitter, not all those who wander are lost. I won't read the whole thing to you. Yeah, she mentions that she found my videos during the whole pandemic thing that was going on. That's kind of cool, because she was, I guess it's, she found out she was related to that Lewis Robber guy, and I made a video on him, and that's kind of how she found my videos too, so that's pretty cool. So thank you for that. She even has it on the, like a stamp on the card there. That's cool. So thank you for that, Linda. Oh yeah, she asked, yes, yeah, the fire in Centralia is real. It is actually burning there. All right, let me grab something else here. All right, so the next packaging card is from Marty. This looks like a homemade card, too. It's got some, it's like a butterfly and a fish, some things on there. So thank you for that. Thank you for the kind words and, and the gift that was in the card. They also keep a package. This is kind of interesting. I never had this sent to me in the mail before. Two cans of sardines. So, you know I like sardines. If you watch my videos, you know I like sardines. So, thank you for those. Those will get eaten. And then they sent me also these. <laughs> the Elfin Mix. Keebler Elfin Mix. I'm not going to open these in the video right here. I'll probably save these. Actually, you know what? Why not? Okay, it's lunchtime anyway. Oh yeah, there's quite a, a mix of stuff in there. Let's get one of the the elves. There you go. All right. I know what I'll be eating on the way home. So here's another cool. Almost looks like a homemade card too, but I don't think it is. Well, I think there's a hedgehogs on there. This is from Pam. Pam's from Arkansas. It's a nice little letter for me here. Yeah, she cool. She mentioned too. She has a child with a, a child with what what I'll say is special needs and how they're kind of stuck at home because of everything that's going on and that they enjoy my videos. So thank you for that. It's a cool little card. A lot of people have said that you know during this whole shutdown lockdown thing going on. You know, not everybody can get out as much as others. You know, some people are more at risk, and it's not advisable for them to go out. Whereas for someone like me, I'm not, I'm not really at risk at all, so I just kind of went out and filmed. So, all right, then I got a. Yeah, but depending on who you are, you shouldn't, like, especially if you're elderly, have certain, you know, those conditions. You gotta be careful. I just want to throw that out there. I'm not trying to be, uh, whatever you call it. But this is from. 
Outdoor Adventures with Sean is a female. I know several Seans, and I, I first I thought it was a guy, but I think that as a female, so she is a, she is a female. She has her own channel. Thank you for the letter. You can check her out. That's the name of the channel, Outdoor Adventures with Sean. You can go out and check that channel. So thank you for that. A lot of channels have these little stickers. I'm kind of thinking of maybe having someone design one for me as well. We'll see. I right, got one more box over here that I gotta pull over. All right, here. so the next package is from Kathleen, I think it was, or Kathy. Uh, yeah, I, I think it was Kathleen. Sorry if that's wrong, but I know it started with a K. So she sent me a, a box. There's some interesting things in it here. Uh, oh, well, the one thing she sent was this. It's the, the there's that Mio. It's the powdered stuff that you can put in your water. I've actually looked and get some of these before, but then I kind of forgot about them. So like I have water bottles in the Jeep up there. So you just dump these in there. And instead of just drinking plain old boring water, you can have flavored water. It's actually, this one has vitamins in it as well. So that's pretty cool. So I'm definitely using these. Actually, I might, I should have brought a water bottle down, but anyway, those will get used. Oh, there's some fishing line in here. I know I haven't really gone fishing this year. Yeah, anyway, I'm, well, most of my fishing gear is packed away right now because I'm in the process of getting ready to move and stuff. So the stuff I wasn't using, I kind of packed away. So I probably won't be doing any fishing this summer. Hopefully next summer. Sorry about that. <laughs> All right, she sent me some other interesting things that she made. She made some dish rags for me. Like, I think, like, I guess you would say this is crochet or knitted. I'm not sure what the difference between the two is. <laughs> Sorry, those are pretty cool, homemade ones. And she sent me these. She calls them pot scrubbers. A couple of them, I guess, for scrubbing pots. But I think I found a never use for them. I drink a lot of coffee, and they make nice little mug holders. You know, obviously you can drink, you know, hold the handle. But if you want to walk around holding it like this, they make this little mug. Not really like coasters, but I think it's kind of cool. That's what they look like mug holders <laughs> and there was something else in here that maybe you think that maybe do, maybe do a double take when I open it up she might know what I'm talking about I saw this in there and uh, you might know what I was thinking at first but it is just dried dill from her garden and it definitely smells like dill so that was kind of funny all right all right so thank you thank you for that as well so anyway, thank you once again for those gifts and the cards and everything. Each one is appreciated. It's always fun, like I said, to get stop by the post office and have mail waiting for you there. All right, beautiful views back here as well. Beautiful place to sit and share mail with you. I know you had to look at my face the whole time, but I got this look at the beautiful scenes over here. And once again, there's the beautiful view. Penn's Creek. And in, in the upcoming video I'm doing, we'll also be able to see shots of Penn's Creek. There are some railroad tunnels up this way that we're going to check out next in the next video at least so let me pack things up get all this stuff up back to naomi and then we might i don't know we will see it i might do one short little hike here we'll see it so i've decided to go on one short little hike here at this place the map showed that there was a, some kind of a historical marker up here for a railroad bed i think this is the right trail it's kind of right behind the bathrooms I saw another trail just over there. But this takes, well, there's camping areas up here as well. Okay, I'm trying to figure out if I'm on the right trail or not. All right, so I think I'm in the right area. I think, I think this is the old rail bed right here. Let me turn it around. You can see there's like a trail here. I think this is the old rail bit. So there should be a historical marker somewhere along here. Yeah, there used to be a, a village here back in the 1880s. Uh, I forget what it was called offhand. I just researched it last night. Probably had the word Poe in it. Poe po Mills or something like that. It was a, you know, a lumber town. There were a number of railroad beds up this way, I think. I haven't really seen any kind of a historical marker yet. We'll see. 
I'm not gonna spend a lot of time looking for it though. All right, well, I don't really see it up here anywhere. Maybe there used to be one up here and it's not, or maybe I'm not quite right in the, quite in the exact right spot. But anyway, I think we're gonna call it quits though. End this video here. Um, the day isn't ending. I gotta, I'm gonna go explore some two railroad tunnels next in the next video. The Poe Paddy Tunnel and the Coburn Tunnel. They go by other names as well, but they're both right in this general area. They're both pretty short railroad tunnels, nothing really long, but I'm not going to turn down some tunnel exploration though. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video exploring the, the Poe Valley and these two state parks with me. I'll see you in the next video. Thanks.